You're watching Tip TV Finance with me, Jenny Hammond and Zach Mir. And with us in the studio is Eddie Tofpik from ADM Investor Services. Eddie, it's good to have you good with us. Here. So we're going to start off with the euro, is that right? Euro dollar, yes. Okay, so let's look at the first slide. What are we seeing there? Well, it's an interesting action yesterday. We saw effectively what is a bullish hammer, the last action of the day, indicating that the market doesn't really want to go much further down. We've got this support line of a, a shift pitchfork there, which is trading around about just above 105.50, maybe 105.70. And today we've moved up. Now, bull hammers, not always are they bullish signs. Sometimes they're continuation, but in this particular instance, it looks like it doesn't really want to go much lower. We have some, some fairly decent support around that uh, support line, and also around about 105.43. And then the next move up, well... We're now above the key 10606 level, which is the 50% Fibonacci movement for the recent action. We didn't close below it. Really, we closed just below it for two times, but we just really didn't do it. And now it looks like we may have a pullback up, possibly up to about 107. But overall, the action is still bearish. Everything's pointing lower. It's just, we've just had enough for the moment on the downside. Let's try up again. A little bit of inverted head and shoulders there with the November support around 105, 105.50. I mean, the, the, the double stroke, triple bottom that we saw back into December, that was the thing that pushed the market back up. But you see the high, which was just over 108, wasn't as high as back in December. So it's, always, it's still a bear market. Right. It's, it, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that inverted head and shoulders is that strong a pattern at the moment. Just having a go, you know, just to see, see what you say and everything. Oh, I didn't recognise it. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to the dollar yen. I think so. The next one. Yeah, we're in a sort of a holding pattern. We're caught up between the level of support, which is this load of support between 111.96 all the way down to 106.55. And it's stratified. You can see every single few points there's a support. Some of them are big figures, but basically every sort of 90 points or so there's a support area. It went down to that, <coughs> it tried the first one, and then turned straight around and went back up again. But it didn't manage to go above, above the 115.11, which is the 50% Fibonacci of this move, which is, you'd say, if it's going to be the, a recovery. the opposite of the euro dollar, basically, in terms of the price action. I, I think in some ways, yes. But this is its own particular fashion because a double top there, it doesn't necessarily relate in the euro dollar. In this particular instance, it went up there and it came straight back off. And it's indecision. It's not really convinced of it actually going higher because you've got an indecisive spinning top there. So it's just churning around the top end of the market. So eventually I think it'll probably go back down again. But it won't necessarily, there's not enough ammunition to let it go further down. Mm. So I'd say you've got to range 115 down to about 111 and we're going to be moving back towards the 111 area but it's not enough to push it through or even really give it a good crack. Okay. And our last slide, Bitcoin. Ah, Bitcoin. This is a really interesting chart in many ways because um, the, the, the action when it dropped like a stone there, uh, it went through that 945.68 support, but it didn't close below it. And that was the key factor. It didn't close below it and it held above it. And to be honest, it was around about half the day's range. So, yeah, it, it, was, it was an interesting pull down, but it didn't like below it, and now we're going back up again. The resistance, as you can see, is that uh, short trend line, which is around about the uh, 1060 area. But I think we've got to have a look and see if the 1080 is going to be tested one more time. All the, all the lines there, with the exception of that downtrend line, all of them are pointing upwards. Mm. All the moving averages are pointing upwards, though they're lagging indicators, they're all pointing upwards. So I think there's an issue there that we actually may see a resurgence in the, this one. It's the money, to, it's, it's the place to go to, like gold. Isn't it? I mean, this you know, it's a heart attack inducing market. I mean, they do, every now you and again. You want something to trade. This is brilliant to this trade. This will kill you. It could be the last trade. But, no, but the thing with this is also, you can see what they do. There's the slow rallies or steady rallies, and then all of a sudden they pull the rug. Yeah. Get, flush everybody out, and then it's back up again. But it's as if somebody's just. Classic market. Yeah but, some, yeah, but somebody's trying to make sure that Bitcoin never takes off as a store of value, a store of safety thing. Well, you could say that, but this was $8 in the past, and now we're trading close to, well, just over a thousand, and we've been the high of the market. I think was 1140, 1164. I think it was. And you see those lines I've projected: 1231, 1280. Those are projected Fibonacci levels. It's never been that high. So consequently, we're looking to see if actually, when it does go higher, those could potentially be levels of resistance. Well, what I was hinting at was just isn't is the best time to buy this when there's been a crash. When you know, just after the record. In any market. After the record. It was Rothschild who said, "I never sold the high and I never bought the low." He did all the stuff that's in between. And that's what we're seeing there. We're seeing a great market. We had a big pullback. 
if you had um, you know, the, 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 the patience to hold onto this market, then you'd see a move back up again. But it depends very much what happens when it comes to that trend line and when it gets to 11, eight, uh, 1080. If we do that, then 1140 is going to be under risk again. But what I was hinting at as well is that it wouldn't be better to wait, let's say, look for a, tr a level like 920, 940. You know, there's a bad day in the, in the, in for Bitcoin, that's where you go mm. in, rather than trying to chase it higher. Because this, it, although it's really, really tempting to, to, buy, to buy the breakout, this is a market to buy the dips. You are the talking the difference between somebody who's a retail investor and somebody who's a professional investor. I absolutely right, I agree with you. You know, a retail investor gets frightened into doing something because they might miss it. Whereas a professional investor sits back and waits, not prepared, not worried about selling a market to let it go down, but also looking to wait it goes down low enough that it's a value that they would look at and say, okay, there's support at this level. It's the action is very, very similar to what I've seen in the past, which, as you say, is what we've seen. And you can mirror it there, though it's on a smaller scale in the recent days, and then I'll accumulate and go and see what happens next. Now, the other difference between retail and a, a professional investor, the, the professional doesn't mind sitting out, being on the sidelines, waiting for the yeah. right time. Whereas a retail investor always want to, wants to be trading, always wants to be in the market, whether it's good yeah, or not. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's also to do with the psychology, to do with um, the, the, um, the need of, to suss around to basically, I need to be right, so I need to be in the market. And then the reward you get is not necessarily making money, but the reward you get is the... Entertainment. End, yeah, the end of more endorf, endorphins. Yes. You know, right? The, of, I got it right against the market. No, you didn't. You got it right because you were lucky or you might have got it right because you used the right indicators. Whereas a professional is detached and just moves on. Well, Eddie, let's finish with your trade of the day. I'd still look and say maybe that yen one to have a look at that one. Okay. Yeah, I'd say dollar yen. All right, super. Eddie, thank you. Eddie Tuffbick there from ADM Investor Services.